welcome after learning about distillation and its construction now let us go to understand some of the basics of the analysis of the distillation columns uh, for design purpose so in this particular lecture we shall be looking into design of distillation column and what we shall learn that we shall learn about the stages the equilibrium stages and the estimation of the number of stages so the basis of the design for this columns are that we determine the number of stages the location of the feed to the column and the reflux ratio now first let us see what is a stage now stage is a single device or a group of devices that brings about some separation to the mixture and in a stage what happens first the vapor and liquid are brought into intimate contact and then they are mechanically separated so mechanically separated because unless we separate them out we cannot get a better uh, um, product from the initial feed so the first the vapor and liquids are intimately mixed and then they are again physically separated and this can can be brought about as we learned earlier by some tray or plate column uh, plate or some packing so here as i showed you in the earlier lecture that we can have different types of trays sieve tray bubble cap tray then tunnel cap tray then the structured packings so these are the ones which are used to make these kind of stages please understand that stages uh, are effective in bringing about separation but they do not represent any kind of physical entity uh, that is why they are named as stage means a plate is not a stage okay so we shall be seeing that how to convert the uh, number of stages into the number of plates or trays or the uh, pat column so now next we come to the equilibrium stage and equilibrium stage is also called ideal or theoretical stage and the name suggests that it gives the maximum separation between the liquid and the vapor because the liquid and vapor are so intimately contacted for long enough time so that these two phases come to equilibrium and that that will give us the maximum possible separation under the given condition in the column that is the pressure and temperature and here we find that the column is taken to be comprising uh, various stages that uh, earlier we found that the total column was given in terms of the trays or the um, packing but now we are putting the column in terms of stages so here we find the feed is going and the stage may be numbered from 1 to like that up to n and the condenser is there and reflux drum and the reflux is coming here from the top and here it the liquid is going it is getting vaporized in the partial reboiler and the liquid is taken out as the product and the vapor is going back to the column so this is how this particular uh, distillation column has been reduced in terms of the stages now we shall be uh, concentrating on the binary distillation column design there are various other methods for the multi component and which are not under the purview of this particular course but uh, here we shall be looking into some binary column and this can still be used for multi component with some modifications so let us see that how we design this kind of columns uh, in this also we have two types which are very common one is the mccapthilly method and there is a ponchon savrit method uh, we shall be looking into the mccapthilly method which is easier of the two and then we have after doing this design what we shall get we shall get some approximate number of the equilibrium stages and the reflux required for the separation so let us now go for the mccapthilly method this mccapthilly method is based on the equilibrium composition diagram that is xy diagram for a vapor liquid equilibrium now there, there are some assumptions in this mccapthilly method first is that the pressure in the column is taken to be constant and the molar latent heat of vaporization of the liquid and the vapor are taken to be constant and that is possible if the all the components can be assumed to have the same and constant enthalpy of vaporization then because of this constant enthalpy vaporization what happens that for each mole of liquid vaporizing same number of moles is coming from the vapor to liquid phase okay that means what happens that whatever amount of liquid is lost due to vaporization is compensated 
exactly by the amount of vapor that is getting condensed. In that way, what we find the liquid and the vapor which is which are going up and uh, down, what we find the vapor that they have const they are able to maintain constant flow rate throughout the uh, particular uh, other stages. So, that is why we call the constant liquid and vapor flow rates throughout each section of the column that is in rectifying section we have one liquid flow rate, one vapor flow rate and in the stripping section we have one liquid flow rate and one vapor flow rate. Only thing is this the liquid flow rate in the stripping section and the rectifying section may or may not be constant. Similarly, the vapor flow rate in the stripping section and the rectifying section may or may not be constant. We will see about this later on, but this particular assumption is called constant molar overflow and we assume that there is not a significant sensible heat transfer and there is the, um, um, the total operation is adiabatic that is there is no heat in leak or out leak from between the system and the surroundings. Here we first consider the rectification section or the enriching section. Here we what we do that we number the stages from top to bottom as 1, 2 up to small n and this, uh, this particular section comprises of the stage just above the feed stage. Okay? So, here that means this particular section will move just above the feed stage. So, what we first do that first we choose this particular control volume which is having including this condenser and some nth number of stages and we uh, as with the our nomenclature what we do that we put x1, x2 as the mole fraction of the liquid and y1, y2 as the mole fraction in the vapor and in this case the subscript is corresponds to the stage number from which the particular stream comes out. That means, from the stage 1 this liquid is coming out. So, we are putting the subscript 1 to this x. Similarly, when this liquid is coming out from the nth stage, we are putting the subscript n to this mole fraction of liquid. Similarly, this vapor is coming out from the stage 2. So, we are putting 2 as a subscript to y and similarly here this particular vapor is coming out from the nth stage. So, it is given as y n and here we have find that this but because the number is increasing from top to bottom. So, the vapor which is coming to the nth stage is taken to come out from from n plus 1th stage 1 stage. So, this particular mole fraction is given n plus 1 as the subscript and from top we find that the this vapor is coming from the first stage. So, it, it has been given the uh, y 1 as the mole fraction and then the liquid which is going into the uh, column as reflux, it is taken to be coming out from a stage which is 0th. 0 does not exist physically, but uh, as per nomenclature any stage that is above this first is taken to be 0. So, we are giving this x 0 as the mole fraction of the uh, reflux uh, liquid. And here we put x d as the distillate composition, d is the um, uh, flow rate of the distillate, l is the flow rate of the reflux and v is the flow rate of the vapor. So, with this nomenclature what we do? We take this particular control volume and makes the again we go back to our uh, this mesh equations which we learnt earlier. So, first we take the mass balance, in the mass balance we find that v is equal to L plus D that is V is going in and L and D are coming out. Please understand all these balances are made at steady state. So, this V is equal to L by L plus D and then what we do that we are put making the component material balance and we are writing the material balance in terms of the lighter component. Okay, so, we have the Y n plus 1 V into Y n plus 1 is the molar flow rate of this lighter component is equal to L x n. L x n is the molar flow rate out of the uh, lighter component and similarly plus d x d is the molar flow rate of the lighter component going out of the control volume. So, that is how we are going for the component material balance and then we define a reflux ratio r which is the ratio of the liquid refluxed to the amount of distillate taken. So, this is taken as L by D. 
So, with this definition of reflux ratio, what we do? We are reducing the this particular equation uh, as y n plus 1 L by v x n plus d by v into x d. Now, this particular equation, what is it doing? It is correlating the composition of the two crossing stream, this they are these two things are passing by. So, this two composition of the these two streams, this y n plus 1 and x n, these compositions are being related by this particular operating line. And now, we take the material balance around this condenser, we find that V is going inside the condenser and it is being split into two streams L plus D. So, we find that this V is equal to L plus D. Now, we are doing a sub bit of uh, rearrangement here to find the value of L by V from this equation and we find L by V is equal to L by L plus D from this and we then divide the numerator and denominator by D. So, L by we get L by D as reflux, L by D as reflux R plus 1. So, this L by V can be replaced by R by R plus 1. Similarly, this D by V is taken as D by L plus B. Again, we divide by D. So, we get 1 by R plus 1. So, this D by V is now replaced by 1 by R plus 1. So, the operating now, now becomes Y N plus 1 in terms of only reflux ratio and the uh, distillate composition. Now, we can also find out the D by V ratio from the our uh, energy balance. So, if we take an energy balance, we, what we find that this is the amount of energy that is going in. Here, the H is signifying the specific molar enthalpy and the subscript V is given to signify the vapor. So, this, this is the total amount of enthalpy going into the system and this is the enthalpy coming out with the liquid this is the enthalpy going out with the distillate and this is the condenser duty that is also taken. That means, the, we are we have to take out the energy from the vapor to liquefy it. So, this is a condenser duty which is coming out of the system. Again, when we rearrange this equation, we get the expression for d by v. That means, d by v can either be obtained from the reflux ratio or from the energy balance. Now, we find that the operating line of the rectifying section is a straight line and it passes through this point x d x d that we can find from here that if I put this value of x d here, if we put x d here, what we find that y n plus 1 will also be coming to x d. You can do it easily. So, y n plus 1 x d that means this operating line may, it passes through x d x d and because for a given operation r is constant. So, the slope is also constant. So, because slope is constant, so we can say this is a straight line. So, that is how we say that is straight line and it passes through x d x d and it will intersect at 45 degree line because 45 degree line means where there the x is equal to y. So, x d x d will be there on a 45 degree line and the slope is r by r plus 1 and the y intercept is x d by r plus 1 which is obtained by putting x n is equal to 0. So, this is the characteristics of the rectifying section operating line. Now, after doing this let us see that how we can find out the number of equilibrium stages that we can do this first we have this particular 45 degree line on a x y diagram. Please understand this, this both the x and y coordinates at the same scale only then we can make this 45 degree line. So, after the same scale what we do? We draw the equilibrium curve from some given data and then we locate the x d x d point we understand because this is in terms of the lighter component. So, naturally x d will be nearer to 1 it could be 95 percent 98 percent like that. So, we find that it is on the top of this particular graph. So, here we have x d x d and from there what we do we can either draw a straight line with a slope of r by r plus 1 or we can locate the intercept on the y axis as x d by r plus 1. Now, that we have two points we can join them to get the straight line equation for the operating line of the rectifying section. After drawing the operating line now what we do that from this uh, operating line we go straight to the 
straight to the um, um, equilibrium curve. Now, why when we go from the straight to the x d x d to the straight to the equilibrium curve, what we find we can locate the value of the x 1 y 1, because this x d x d this is giving us that we are able to this is a total condenser we are con considering. So, because total condenser we are finding that this is the value of the x 1 and y 1 and then what we do after that we go to the operating curve equation. So, once we know x 1 we can find the value of the y 2. Now, once we know y 2 we can find out from the equilibrium relationship the value of the x. The, the, this is the this is wherever this particular horizontal line intersects the equilibrium curve the corresponding value of the x is the x 2. Once we know x 2 then we can find from the operating line the value of the y 3 by drawing a horizontal line and then we find that from y 3 if wherever it intersects the uh, equilibrium curve there we get the value of the x 3. That means, by using the operating line and the equilibrium curve alternately we are able to move down the column and find out the vapor and liquid compositions at various stages and this particular construction is very simple it is called staircase construction and by this staircase construction we are able to get the number of stages. Please mind it that if we are using a partial condenser as I said the partial condenser can also effect a additional um, separation and at the best it can also act as an equilibrium stage. So, that whatever number of stages we count like we count the number of the horizontal lines as number of stages because their horizontal line is bringing the two phases into equilibrium. So, if there is a partial condenser we take the top one as the partial condenser because the x d x d will be coming out of the condenser and not directly from the column. So, the actual number of equilibrium stages in the column will be taken to be the number counted here minus 1. So, that is how we take care of the partial condenser this is not necessary or not required when we are using a total condenser. Now, total condenser does not act as a stage whereas, a partial condenser acts as a stage. Now, then we go to the stripping section. In the stripping section what we find that we are now considering the stages which are below the feed stage again as we did for the rectifying section. In this case we are having the similar nomenclature the only difference is this in this case we are putting the liquid flow rate with a over bar and vapor flow rate with a over bar and rest of the nomenclatures for the mole fractions follow the same pattern that we are putting the stage number from which the particular uh, stream is coming out. And in this case what we do we take the control volume which includes the a partial reboiler and here what we do that we are writing the overall material balance as L is going into the system V bar is uh, V over bar is coming out of system and B is coming out of system. So, L over bar is equal to V over bar plus B and then we go for the component material balance in this what we find that this L over bar into X m is the amount of component going in the system V over bar into Y m plus 1 is the amount which is coming out of the system and B into X b is the amount of component that is coming out of the system. So, this becomes our material balance please understand we are using the equ equilibrium relationship by un un understanding that the any stream the vapor and the liquid coming out from the each of the stages are in equilibrium that is if I choose any of these stages like x n and y n this x n and y n are in equilibrium. So, now by again rearranging this particular uh, equation we get this uh, equation which is the operating line for the stripping section and in this particular equation we see it correlates the uh, passing streams again this y m plus 1 that means this this stream vapor stream and this liquid stream their compositions are being correlated by the operating line of the stripping section. Now, in this case like we define reflux ratio we can also define a, a boiler ratio as V over bar by B and in terms of this V over bar by, bar by B we can rewrite 
the operating line in this way. Now, we can find this um, energy balance equation like write this energy balance. In this case, we find that we are including the reboiler duty on the liquid side because this reboiler duty is supplied into the system to boil up the uh, liquid. So, this is going into the system along with the enthalpy which is carried by the liquid in, into the system and this is being balanced by the outgoing vapor enthalpy and the enthalpy carried by the bottoms and again we rearrange the equation and from this we can find the value of B by V over bar which may also be used to find out the operating line equation. Now, we find that this operating line equation is a straight line as long as the boiler pressure is uh, constant and when we put x m equal to x b, we find y m plus 1 is also equal to x b. That means, this operating line passes through x b x b. So, that one end of the operating line is on the 45 degree line and this has a slope of v b plus 1 by v b and then y intercept of minus 1 by v b. That means, it will be below the uh, 0 x axis. Now, here we have uh, the construction of the, uh, the, uh, the stages for the stripping section. What we do again as we did for the rectifying section, first we plot the x y diagram with the same scale and then we make this 45 degree line. So, that the compositions x and y are same on the for this line and then we locate the x b. Please understand x b here is on the left hand side corner because we are talking in terms of the more volatile component, its composition will be very less in the bottom product. So, it will be quite small here, it may be 2 percent, 5 percent etcetera. So, we will put it on this lower side x b x b and now what we do, what we find that this x b if we have the partial reboiler and if the partial reboiler may act as a equilibrium stage itself at the best. So, we what we do to know the composition of the vapor coming out of the partial reboiler, this liquid is taken to the equilibrium curve and here we find the, the composition of the vapor which comes out of the partial reboiler and that is y b. That is the partial reboiler is acting as the as one equilibrium stage. Then from this y b we go to the operating line to find out the value of x n because x n and y b are the passing streams. Then once we know x n again we go that means now x n once we go to x n means uh, we have entered the nth stage. Now from that we again go to the equilibrium curve to get the composition of the vapor flow vapor vapor which is flowing out of the nth stage and so y, x n and y n are in equilibrium. Now once we know the y n then we again we go to the and we go to the uh, operating line of the stripping section and from there we can know the composition of the x n minus 1. And once we know x n minus 1, then we go back to the equilibrium curve to get the value of the y n minus 1. And that way if we use this operating line and the equilibrium curve uh, alternately, we can traverse from the bottom to top of the stripping section and ultimately we move up the column up to the feed stage. So, we find the slope of this particular line is this v b plus 1 by v b and if we extend this particular line downward, we will find the intercept will be minus 1 by v b. Now, we go to the feed stage. Now, what is feed stage? Feed stage basically correlates the boiler ratio and the reflux ratio and we will see how it is done. Now, first let us look at the feed stage. In the feed stage what we are having that the vapor is coming from the stripping section and going into the rectifying section, liquid is coming from rectifying section and going into the stripping section and we are putting different uh, notations for the vapor and liquid flow rates in the two sections and we are naming this stage as small f and capital F represents the feed flow rate. So, this is the only addition which is happening in the feed stage. This there was no external addition of any stream for the other rectifying or the enriching or the stripping section. Now, with this particular uh, 
configuration we write the material overall material balance as f plus l plus v which are this is the in, incoming stream to the feed stage and these are the outgoing stream the streams from the feed stage and this is the energy balance and what we do that we make an assumption here we assume that that there is not much change in the temperature pressure across the feed stage so that all these enthalpies can be taken to be the same so with this assumption what we do we take that this whatever enthalpy is going from if this if i go with nomenclature here we find that f plus 1 is on the bottom and f minus 1 is on top so with the nomenclature because we are counting from the top to bottom so we find that the there is not much change in the enthalpy as the streams uh, cross the feed stage so we take the enthalpies of the liquid coming in and going out of the feed stage same as hl and the vapor enthalpy of the streams which are going into the and coming out of the feed stage as the same as hv with this assumption we can modify this energy balance equation in this way and we rearrangement of this will just give us this particular equation and then we rearrange, rearrange the equation like this and define a particular quantity q and q we can see that hv minus hf is the enthalpy required to convert one mole of feed to saturated vapor please understand in the column because we are assuming equilibrium all the vapors are taken to be at their dew point and all the liquid are taken at to be their bubble point so hv minus hl is the molar enthalpy of vaporization of the feed now with this we find that this is the way we can also find the value of the for a subcooled liquid that hf is the enthalpy vaporization and is a sensible heat to convert the feed to the bubble point and this is the hfg and for the superheated vapor we simply subtract the sensible heat from the dew point to, from the dew point to the feed point feed temperature and now we have uh, the q line we define the q line like this that we consider these operating lines for the two sections and then subtract them and we get this particular equation in terms of the q and then what we do we write the this equation this is the feed line or q line this gives us the, uh, the locus of the intersection of the operating lines of the stripping section and the rectifying section so by knowing this uh, locus what we can do that it helps us in uh, uh, constructing all the operating lines for both the stripping section and the rectifying section we shall see later and we find that if i put x to zf then y is equal to zf and with constant q this is a straight line equation so the straight line passing to zf zf slope of q by q minus 1 and it is completely described by the feed conditions that is why it is called the feed line now there can be various types of feed possible subcooled liquid bubble point liquid feed and partially vaporized feed dew point feed and depending on the type of the feed we find we have different values of q you can easily find out that the q value will be more than 1 for subcooled liquid and so the slope of this thing will be more than 1 the saturated vapor will be 1 for vapor liquid mixture it will be between 0 and 1 for saturated vapor it will be 0 and super temperature it will be less than 0 so with this kind of various types of feed will determine the type of the q value and with the different type of q value we will get different slopes of the feed line and here we can see in this figure that if we have subcooled liquid the slope will be this this is the q line for the subcooled liquid this is q line for the saturated liquid this is for the vapor liquid mixture this is saturated vapor and this is for the superheated vapor so that means the stripping section of operating line and the rectifying section of operating line will be intersecting at one of in one of these lines now here we see that once we have these operating lines these two operating lines this particular cross section will be on this feed line and here in this particular figure we see that once we locate the uh, xd point xb point and the zf point we can draw the Uh, uh, feed line. We can draw the 
operating line from the rectifying section and from this point of intersection if I join the x b x b point I will get the operating line for the stripping section. That means, I do not need to construct the operating line of stripping, stripping section separately simply by drawing the feed line and the operating line of the rectifying section I can generate the uh, operating line for the uh, stripping section. And once we have done that then what we can do simply do that we can start making these stages as I explained earlier I can keep making the staircases uh, to get the number of stages in the total column. Only thing one has to remember that when I am above the feed I will be using the operating line for the rectifying section and as soon as we cross the feed we shall be using the operating line for the stripping section and that is how we can construct the staircases from the uh, top to the bottom. And we have different types of uh, feed um, uh, introduction like if we have subcooled feed then the feed will be going to the bottom. Then if we have a bubble point feed it will also come to the lower plate. If we have a partially vaporized feed then we will find the vapored portion will move up the column whereas the liquid portion will come down the column. We have dew point feed and the superheated feed in both the cases we shall find that this will be moving up the column. The difference is this when this subcooled liquid is goes um, goes then it will also try to uh, uh, liquefy some of the vapor so that we find that some of the liquid will come from the vapor too which is not the case when we are putting the saturated liquid. The subcooling is also helping us to uh, get some condensation of the vapor whereas in this case we find when we put superheated vapor some of the superheat is used to re-vaporize the liquid so that uh, some of the liquid will get re-vaporized which is not the case when we put the saturated vapor. So, that is how they become different and we find that the how the liquid flow rates in the vapor flow rates get affected in the two sections by the type of the particular uh, or the uh, uh, feed condition that we find that for example, in this particular case we find that the, the liquid flow rate in the stripping section is more than the liquid flow rate in the uh, re um, rectifying section because the feed adds to this particular flow rate to give, give us the stripping section liquid flow rate and similar logic can be applied to find out the or to compare the liquid and vapor flow rates in the two sections. So, this is a brief introduction to this distillation column uh, analysis and these two books may be used for more detail. For more detail. Thank you.